For movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Tim Allen, the making of a movie can be a demanding and repetitive process, as take after take is filmed until the director is satisfied. Let's do one more. Print those two, meaning go again, please. Such repetition can become tedious. But for filmmakers, precise repetition of a shot is vital in the creation of dynamic visual effects. This precision is made possible by motion control technology, the computer-controlled movement of cameras, props, or both, which allows shots to be repeated over and over again with complete accuracy. Coming up, we'll meet the father of motion control, John Dykstra, whose groundbreaking work in Star Wars made the technology a staple of modern special effects. We'll see how motion control lets Tim Allen take the reins of Santa's sleigh for the fantasy comedy The Santa Claus. And puts Arnold Schwarzenegger in the cockpit of a Harrier jump jet in the action epic True Lies. Welcome to the world of motion control, where doing it once is never enough. Next on Movie Magic. Director James Cameron wanted to tell the larger-than-life story of a heroic secret agent out to save humanity. One actor immediately came to mind, Arnold Schwarzenegger. To create the numerous special effects that would place Arnold in the most precarious of positions, Cameron turned to Academy Award-winning visual effects supervisor John Bruno and his team at Digital Domain. Bruno and Cameron had previously worked together on such special effects heavy movies as The Abyss and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And Bruno soon realized that true lies would be no less challenging. I basically said, I'm doing this film. He, he, uh, he was sort of skeptical and had some other projects he wanted to do. And I said, well, look, just read it, you know. And he, he reads the script and he calls me up and he says, you son of a bitch, you put in all the things that you knew would get me to do this movie. The film follows the adventures of secret agent Harry Tasker, played by Schwarzenegger, as he battles a gang of nuclear terrorists intent on destroying Miami, Florida. The film is filled with elaborate stunts and special effects, but none so spectacular as when Schwarzenegger takes to the air to rescue his daughter from the terrorist leader Aziz. The main point that Jim was pushing was you have to believe, the audience has to believe, that Arnold's flying this jet. To film much of the movie's climactic fight between Tasker and Aziz, Cameron and Bruno elected to move outside the security of a soundstage and shoot atop a 20-story building in downtown Miami. When you move out of, the, out of the clinical laboratory environment of a soundstage, you're subject to all the forces of nature. Wind, rain, overcast, changing light during the day, one we didn't really think of, uh, which was lightning, except that we went down there to, to scout the location, and we went up on the roof, and there were lightning rods every six feet all the way around the roof. We went, hmm, things that make you go, hmm. For the rooftop shots, a 47-foot-long mock-up of the Harrier jet was constructed from fiberglass panels supported by a steel substructure. To achieve the airplane's dynamic movement, Bruno relied on motion control technology, the heart of any motion control system is a computer, which can be programmed to relay information to motors that move a prop or a camera. For True Lies, the computer controlled a 20,000-pound hydraulically driven motion base, on top of which was mounted the 7,000-pound model of the Harrier. The motion base was capable of tilting 60 degrees in any direction. Because all the movements of the motion base were stored in the computer, a sequence of moves could be precisely repeated. A large construction crane was erected on the rooftop, from which a remote-controlled camera crane was suspended. And action! 
For the next 10 days, the motion base performed as design, repeating moves that allowed the filmmakers complete control and predictability. They gave the, the director the freedom of saying that all he had to concentrate on was performance and maybe want to change the camera position from time to time. But the machine and the plane and every, they did the same thing every time. motion base starts, watch where the camera goes. <laughs> I'm like off the plane. Well, at first everybody was kind of nervous because of the scale of this whole thing. You know, it was a 20,000 pound motion base and 7,000 pound jet on the top of a roof with these huge hydraulic systems, you know, spinning around and moving around. You know, I overheard Arnold say to Jim, he goes that, you know, Jim says, this is the money. I mean, he's sitting in the jet. So this is the money. This is where the money is. This is great. Uh, never heard that. And that sort of relaxed me because I was like stressed a little bit. Here we go. And bring the plane to life. The Miami skyscraper could not be used for shots looking down on the aircraft as the rooftop would be seen. So the filmmakers moved the jet and motion base to a Los Angeles airport hangar where a giant green screen had been installed. The green screen process allows a foreground object to be combined with a separate background image. The final shots come together in the digital domain computers, where the green screen is replaced with a Miami skyline, making the Harrier appear to hover over the city. For added realism, rippling heat signatures from jet exhaust are digitally simulated and tracked into the image. The films of director James Cameron have been recognized for their groundbreaking special effects. But no matter how elaborate the visual effects are, he sees them as merely a tool, never to upstage the story. The goal is to sort of submerge yourself in a fantasy where things appear to be really happening. So maybe it's a stunt, maybe it's an effect, you don't care, it looks real. Coming up, we'll meet the father of motion control and see how the technology has gone on to some very big things. If you were thrilled when an X-Wing fighter flew across the screen in Star Wars, then you've come under the spell of special effects pioneer John Dykstra. He and his compatriots at George Lucas's fledgling Industrial Light and Magic used motion control computers to operate the camera for the filming of miniature spacecraft and planets. We mounted the camera in a way that allowed us to add motion, and I think really that was the key difference between Star Wars and its visual effects and uh, the, uh, its forebearers, was that the camera constantly moved. It was a very crazy group trying to do something that had never been done before. Uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of talent, but not very much experience. John seemed to have the biggest vision about how we could accomplish what it is I was after, which is primarily to do motion control blue screen, which seemed like a very good idea to me and, and doable. Dykstra's work on Star Wars earned him an Academy Award and the distinction in Hollywood as the father of modern motion control. Dykstra's start came in 1970 when he got his first effects job working for Douglas Trumbull, visual effects supervisor of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Together, they created effects for Star Trek The Motion Picture and Trumbull's own Silent Running. In the early 1970s, Dykstra took a leave of absence from Hollywood. I was working with Doug Trumbull and the opportunity came to work for this group called the Institute of Urban and Regional Development in Berkeley. The Institute sought to simulate urban traffic patterns on a miniature scale. A model of Marin County, California was constructed and a camera fitted with a small periscope-like device called a snorkel lens was moved through the street simulating the viewpoint of a car. The moves were programmed into a computer which operated motors on a camera motion rig. It was a tedious process for the system could only move very slowly, limited by the simple computers of the time but Dykstra's motion control cityscape became the foundation for the next giant leap in motion control photography, a little film about a galaxy far, far away.
The hardest part, I think, of producing the images for Star Wars was taking out the consistent smoothness that motion control, at that time anyway, built in. To give the computer-controlled camera footage a more realistic documentary feel, the effects team input directives that intentionally produced uneven moves and off-centered framing. This helped create the illusion that a cameraman in space had actually filmed the battle scenes, struggling to stay focused on the thrilling action around him. John Dykstra has gone on to create visual effects for such features as Firefox and Batman 3. But the cinematic impact may never be greater than when a small model spaceship, photographed with Dykstra's motion control camera, rumbled over our heads and changed the landscape of movies forever. Just as John Dykstra advanced motion control photography, the talents of Thomas Barron have taken it to a new level. His company, Image G, has become known for the creation of unusual and effective motion control rigs. It's not just the quality of the camera motion, but also the fact that the camera and the rig can be sent to a location, can be set up and broken down in a, in a time effective fashion, and be accessible for the production of gourmet studio photography. Perhaps Image G's most famous rig is known affectionately as the Bulldog. The rig can work in any location, as long as the track can be leveled to within one sixteenth of an inch. Its arm is 20 feet long, with a camera mount at the end that is capable of nearly 360 degrees of motion. Although rugged enough to run outdoors, much of the Bulldog's work is done indoors. The servo motors operating the rig are linked to a computer, controlled by cameraman Adrian Hurley. Hurley inputs key camera positions into the computer, along with frame numbers that denote where in the move these camera positions occur. The computer then interpolates the camera's path between the chosen positions, producing a smooth, repeatable camera move. It's like having a large remote control toy at your disposal to play with and get paid for. The Bulldog's specialty has become automobile commercials, since it gives directors the opportunity to bring the camera around and inside a car or truck all in a single move. This type of long, graceful move would be impossible without motion control. While the Bulldog is gigantic, it is not the largest motion control rig in Image G's stable. That distinction belongs to this Goliath called the Mighty Dog. It was created for a much-talked-about Pepsi commercial that pulls out from a close-up of two boys walking in the snow, only to reveal that they are but dots on an ice cube in another boy's soft drink. The effect required two matching pull-outs, from an extreme close-up to an extreme wide shot. Unfortunately, none of Image G's existing rigs were large enough to perform such a long pull-out. Basically, we said, well, if we had a huge boom arm, we could uh, motorize it and pull this off. Engineering the Mighty Dog was a collaboration between Image G and Oregon-based Fluid Images. It utilizes a 70-foot Aquila crane, a camera crane designed in the former Soviet Union. By incorporating a turret capable of 180 degrees of motion, Image G allowed director Steve Chase to shoot on two adjacent snow-covered sets in consecutive days. To build the Pepsi rig, we had two weeks, and it took 227 hours in those two weeks. And all this is fabricated in my garage. When construction of the rig was finished, it was assembled on location. Rolls of fiber fill, a biodegradable foam, and more than 150 tons of ice were used to create a winter wonderland. With the set ready, the camera rolls. Action. Baron's crew walks alongside the monstrous rig during the filming to ensure it will stop. It was a little scary just because of the size of this. If something did go wrong, it could have been very dangerous if someone was in the way and the boom came down or the rig ran off the end of the rails. Apart from that, it went very smoothly. The rig was faultless. 
It was just an amazing experience, really, to work with such a large crane. The crane delivers two identical camera moves, one shot on each set. The two shots are then combined seamlessly into one continuous scene. The gigantic camera crane that was only an idea two weeks earlier has completed its task perfectly, and the crew at Image G has used the repeatability of motion control to create a truly unforgettable shot. Coming up, motion control puts Tim Allen in the driver's seat behind a team of famous reindeer for the comedy film, The Santa Claus. Now start to look over there, it's really amazing. On the set of the fantasy comedy, The Santa Claus, motion control will help create the illusion that star Tim Allen's new job is delivering presents on Christmas Eve. It's a very dangerous profession because you're flying without radar, you're flying without a fly, flight controller, so you're in your danger sky is number one. You're going in departments that you don't belong. So there are in, there are intense risks to be in Santa Claus. We find out that there there might well have been many Santa Clauses. Yeah, For director John Pasquin, the goal is to make the audience believe in the magical world of Saint Nick, especially when Santa and sleigh take to the air. I didn't want it to look like a silhouette cut out in front of a moon because the movie is about a man who basically doesn't believe coming to belief. So there's a, the visual component of that is that we try to make things look as realistic as we can. To ensure this realism, Pasquin called on Buena Vista Visual Effects, located on the Disney lot. Here, visual effects supervisor John Sullivan and effects producer Carolyn Soper will oversee the Santa Claus's 94 effect shots. The most interesting ones are possibly having the eight tiny reindeer fly through the air. And the particular problem there is quite obvious, I would think. We couldn't go out and find any flying reindeer. So Buena Vista has decided to use two special effects techniques. For distant shots, computer-generated reindeer will be rendered. For closer shots, miniature puppet reindeer will be filmed and later combined with separately filmed footage of Tim Allen in a full-size sleigh. Motion control will be used both for the prop being filmed and for the camera, assuring that the reindeer and sleigh will line up perfectly in the final shots. The responsibility of programming the computer falls into the hands of motion control operator Les Bernstein. The motion control system itself is basically a desktop computer with its own type of software, um, custom written. Uh, we have a jog box, which is essentially a remote controller or an extension of the keyboard. First, a single mechanical puppet is filmed, which will later be digitally replicated to play the role of all eight reindeer. To assure that each reindeer appears unique, several takes are made, each time slightly varying the puppet's movements. The miniature reindeer is mounted on a model mover or motion base in front of a blue screen. The blue screen will later be replaced with background images from Santa's flight. Movements of the motion base are pre-programmed into and controlled by the motion control computer. On a separate sound stage, Tim Allen climbs aboard a full-size sleigh to film his portion of the flying shots. We're on stage and we're doing that part of the shoot, which is actually the live action, the, uh, the sleigh, which then goes with the reindeer that we've been doing on the blue screen stage at Point of Vista. The full-size prop is mounted on a large motion base controlled by the same computer program used to move the tiny reindeer. This allows Tim Allen to follow the same path as his reindeer team. Once photographed, both the sleigh and miniature reindeer footage are electronically scanned into the Buena Vista computers. Here, the single reindeer is replicated eight times and digitally hitched to the full-size sleigh. The entire image is then matted or placed over a background image. In this shot, snow imprints and shadows are digitally added to enhance the effect. The final results will convince even the most skeptical of Scrooges that reindeer can fly. Today, the same motion control technology that can move a camera or prop is being taken to its next logical step, moving the theater audience itself.
In Seafari, a Japanese theme park ride created by Universal Studios and Hollywood effects company Rhythm and Cues, computerized motion control creates the sensation of taking the audience to the ocean depths. Programmed to match the camera movements on screen, Seafari puts the audience on a computer-controlled motion base that takes them on a stomach-churning undersea voyage. We worked out all of the choreography beforehand in an inexpensive format in vector images, basically just line images. So choreography is basically the motion of the camera. Then we would take that test, project it, and work out the motion base in relationship to the film to make the audience believe that they are experiencing what they are watching. The four and a half minute ride uses a combination of miniature sets photographed by motion control cameras and computer generated imagery, giving audiences a sample of movie thrills to come. From the pitch and roll of a Harrier jet to the moonlit flight of Santa's sleigh, motion control continues to play a vital role in the creation of dazzling visual effects. For the masters of motion control, new journeys await as the technology that once allowed only a lazy trip down a miniature road blasts off into the next frontier of movie magic.